Hey guys, in this video I'm gonna share my experience with yet another ESP8266 project and this time we're gonna play with uh, the Node MCU uh, Lua based firmware. More about that in a, little, in a little bit. Let me show you what the setup look like. Uh, there's no one thing you, you don't know is that there is no Arduino. <laughs> this whole thing we're gonna write the code right in this guy right here. So instead of uh, writing the code, uh, sending 80 commands to this guy, we're actually writing code on this chip. So uh, to do that, of course, we need to talk to it via the computer. So that's what this is here for. This is as an FTDI. And this time it's a 5 volt. So I have a resistor ladder here to bring it down to 3.3. I believe that's a 1K and that's a 2K resistor. So uh, um, just to adjust the, the voltage from the 5 volt from the FTDI. So that goes to the PC. This just goes to a wall ward, and that's 5 volt. Bring it down to 3.3 using this regulator, and that is what powers this guy. He is, of course, powered by the USB. And in addition to the the chip itself, I have two I/O I devices uh, connected to the I/O pins right here. There are two I/O pins on this on this uh, module, and one of them is connected to that switch via a pull-up resistor. And another one is connected to this uh, LED, uh, also has a 1K uh, resistor there. I think that's about it as far as the hardware. So uh, let's talk a little bit more about the... Oh, I don't need to talk about that. Let's talk about the Note MCU. So I learned about it from um, Hackaday. And uh, these guys here... Let's see, yeah, these guys here have created a nice, very nice tutorial. I learned a lot from these guys. And they tell you how to wire it, tells you about the FTDI, tells you how to actually, we are going to completely replace the form word that comes with it. It was kind of scary, but I suppose you could always burn the old one back in. So, um, but so th these, uh, that's what that is. The, uh, I already showed that, but these guys, I don't know who they are, uh, they are this uh, Note MCU team, but they're amazing. Uh, so thanks to these people in Barcelona, and thanks to the people who wrote, who created this, the uh, ESP8266 actually is now pretty nice. Uh, you can actually use it quite reliably, I have not run into any issues other than my own fault. So let's uh, talk about how we actually do things on that thing now. So this is just a, te a text editor, a Note++ text editor. And this guy here is a cool term. Cool term is a, just a terminal program that allows you to connect to the FTDI um, on some port. So now that they're connected, so when I click here, it's actually going to talk to the FTD FTDI and it's going to talk to the uh, ESP8266 module. So let's send some commands. Oh yeah, a little bit about Lua. Uh, so now instead of sending 80 commands, yeah, 80 commands no longer work here. It's like Lua says, I don't understand that. <laughs> but what Lua understands is a lot more than just 80 commands. And the language itself is very similar to JavaScript. Yeah, two dashes is well. I guess, I guess JavaScript don't use two dashes, but this is how they how they do comments. Two dashes means comments. So we could do things like I just pasted that, and it just restarted. And of course, the serial port now got reset it. So let's reconnect back in, and you can do things like how much memory is there left? So there's 20k of memory left when you don't have anything. And actually, I have stuff in there. Uh, some files that I've put in there. So actually there's more than 20K to start with. But uh, you can print the, this is the actual IP address of that module. This is not the, mo the IP address of my PC. This is the IP address of that module. Um, yeah, earlier I mentioned that I have some files. Okay, this is I, I did this intentionally. Now it says unexpected symbol be in, in, uh, near the semicolon. Well, the reason it's not, the problem is not the semicolon. The problem is 
the interpreter of course being an interpreter is not that that fast and the terminal program when I paste this just blast it as fast as it can so what we need to do is we need to change we need to turn on this option in uh, cool term transmit delay and set this to 200 millisecond so now on every line you could see that it actually puts a little delay and it succeed so now it, basically this guy says go grab the list of files from the module itself and then for all the pairs in that in that collection print the name and the size so I got one two three I got five files in there and there's a blank program there's a the web server program Ooh, let me spell my web server and so that's what is in there so it already took a couple almost some some memory from this 20 20k so anyway let's uh, go play with uh, a blink program so to do, define a variable there is no type like it is on the Arduino so you just say what it is and give it a value or a string whatever it just figure out it's like in some very similar to JavaScript and um, you define the pin there is a you could look it up in the in the uh, in the documentation basically we only have two pins <laughs> on this chip eight and nine um, so and then but the rest of it is very similar to Arduino you could say now set the mode of that pin to output and then I have a variable called LED state and to, to, to uh, set the state of the LED you do a, a write just like a digital write on the Arduino you tell it what pin and you tell it what state and this, there are two constant GPIO high and GPIO low but I want to be able to uh, do this uh, by toggling it instead of doing if statements so what I did is I set it to zero and then I every time I go through the loop it will say whatever it, one minus whatever it was so if it was one of course it becomes zero if it was zero it becomes one so and the next thing here is a timer okay yeah instead of doing an infinite loop in here I learned that you could do a timer so there's only one timer unfortunately so you need to stop it before you mess with it so I stop it here and then you say okay timer using the delay value that is defined up there 1000 millisecond with just a second and then the second option is whether or not you want it to repeat so one means keep on doing this otherwise it will just do it once and then it will not fire again and then whenever it fires run this function and inside that function is this code right here and the code as you as I explained basically every time it, it got called it toggles the state and it writes it there so let's see it work so here it is blinking uh, once per second and there's some issues with some uh, uh, jitter I'm not sure if it's my fault or probably my fault <laughs> but uh, let's see it change so if I change it to from the 1000 oh this doesn't look good at all okay from the 1000 if I change it to 200 copy that again and paste it in here again then so now you can see that it is uh, blinking much faster so let's see the last thing I want to mention is that the limit of the GPIO the because of that one of the GPIO that is GPIO 0 is also the pin that it uses to know whether or not you're about to uh, blast the firmware and so this caught me <laughs> out of off guard because things just working great and then I turn it off and I turn back on and it wasn't working well what happened is uh, because the way I wired this um, it's actually bringing that pin to the ground uh, at least close enough to the ground that when I turn it back on it thinks that I want to reprogram it so keep a watch on that and 
um, what I end up doing basically is I, I, I have to kind of like unplug things and w wire it at such that that pin, which is GPIO zero, is on high um, while I turn it on. And after that, it works just fine. But when you turn it on, make sure that the GPIO zero is high rather than low, because if it is low, then it thinks you want to blast the firmware. That's it, guys. Pretty fun. Next uh, video, I'm going to share the uh, web server. I just got that working. So thanks for watching. Bye-bye.